gosh, Louise girl, you're prettier than this bouquet of flowers. <laughs> anyway, this is actually for you on Women's Day. But, Thank you, sweetheart. But I know every day, Lulu Day. But I'm not going to smack it. Eh? You want to do it again? Thank you. Very good, very good, very good. Very good, very good. I love it, I love it's it. Very beautiful. And what is mine? Home, home sweet home, home sweet home. Imagine that. Imagine. Well, I am the woman sweet. of the home. Yeah. Sweet home. Sweet home, yeah. Sweet home. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Anyway, here what happened. You have your juice. I have a cup of tea here. I don't normally drink tea here, but I'm feeling for some tea today. Okay. Cheers. Mm, sorry, I'm making all that noise. Tea. Tender, loving touch. Tea, tea, tea. Tender. Mm hmm. Fairness. Fairness, loving touch. You know, Louis? Why oh, you spell T T A S T? Spell T A S T. And what is the T for tenderness. You can't go wrong with tenderness. And what is this for? The E. T. Everlasting tenderness. And the A. And the A. Hmm. Always on the move. <laughs> <laughs> mm. That's not a very good acronym, Nancy. But here what? It's Mobile's Day, but you don't have to beat me for that, you know. <laughs> yeah, but here the thing, here the thing, here the thing, here You bought this for me yesterday. Yeah. You know I love my rock cake, and I appreciate that you. You do. Oh, GG Web, the gadget for long behind it. Louis, talk to these people a little bit there while I go on uh, and put back up my makeshift thing there. I think you better take it on and let us see what it is. No, 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 no. Just don't. You go ahead. You tell, tell your, your viewers, your listeners, whatever, how much you love them. Well, I wish you women, internationally and otherwise, will have a special day. It's great that women got a day to be appreciated. Some people are fortunate that they appreciate it every day. Some people are appreciated on a set day, Woman's Day, on their birthday, on Valentine's Day. But it's really special when you are appreciated day. Mm -hmm. Very nice, very nice, very nice. And that's Lancy. Yes, I, I try. I try, my friends. I try. Um, actually, you know, Louis. Yeah, I was telling you about this rock cake. Oh, this coconut drop. 50%. 50, 50. I started eating it. Oh, so the bigger piece is mine now. You, you could have the bigger piece if you like. <laughs> but you know, I wanted to eat the whole thing, eh? But then. But I shared my um, no, 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 no. You share your current role with me. That's just true. But I like this. And I say, well, you know, you just give me a nice big meal there. Yeah, you, you can't watch um, rice and. What do you call that stuff you made? Chunky vegetables. Chunky vegetables and chicken what? Chinese style. And it was great. Yeah. It was great, right? Thank you. But then that's only a matter of maybe 45 minutes ago, right? Mm -hmm. And then I fell for a cup of tea and I said, I'm going to have this with me. The coconut drop. Yeah. But to eat all by myself would not have been kind. And you know, I want to be honest, so I decided I'm going to save a little piece of Louise. Right. Thank you very much. You know? Happy Man's Day. I think that's, there's a Man Day too in September, you know. A Man Day or a Man Day? Like Women's Day. It's March, 8th of March. Mm -hmm. There's a day for men. I wasn't even aware of that until recently. Mm -hmm. Well, no matter. As you always treat me good every day, so... Every day is my man's day, right? Yeah. <laughs> but if you could call what I have done and not eating this cake all by myself, and usually I try to incorporate you in what we do, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I could use the word integrity. 
Integrity is, um, I was trying to do a little study on integrity. I'm trying to go back over my lifestyle from Quora days to now to see how integrity works. First thing I had to do was to find out what's the meaning of integrity. They say integrity is wholeness, soundness, honesty. That's a big word in Yeah, integrity. Now, where does integrity really start? In the home life. That is correct. Integrity starts in the home life. I remember, you know, Mother used to say, you want an extra piece? Try a piece of here. Buddy, piece of me, right? <laughs> I'm watching you, know. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. No, I, I, I speak at any moment. I, I, I know. <laughs> why, yeah, why you have your little recess, I go. You know, the crumbs here, the crumbs important, you know. Crumbs in life is really important, eh? Mm -hmm. So look at what you're thinking, right? I remember mother would be saying, if you visit any one of your aunts or your uncles or any neighbor, and you walk into the home, do not touch anything that you might be attracted to because it may, it may not go wrong well with the person you're visiting. If you see a letter open on a table, even in home life, you don't read the letter. You don't touch money that you might see, draw it to the attention of the elder, or the elders, and let them know that there's some money loose here. We grew up with that Louise. Yeah. We grew up in that, with that lifestyle. So you have to be honest. Honesty, integrity is always challenged. Mm -hmm. It's always challenged, okay? Yep. It's like, it's like, I mean, when I began to work at the Express, I remember there was a particular individual who was attracted to me. Can I tell the story? It was before my time? Yeah, before your time. Oh, yeah, but no problem. There was this particular girl who was, we kind of clicked, okay? Mm -hmm. And we, were, we became very close. She was very nice. She, I think she was accepted by my family. She would come to Cora, we would go to the river. We went to a lot of things. You mean down that track you took me yesterday? No, not that track. <laughs> that track is your track. But we, we, we would go to Cora further up in, in the village, right? Mm -hmm. And we were really very close. We went to see a lot of movies together. Excuse me, she loved Indian movies. Excuse me, we went to carnival parties together. Okay, so the work's good. But there came a day when another girl in the same company seemed to be kind of leaning towards me a little bit. Okay. It was a uh, man boy? No, it was just, it was all of It was the integrity. It, it was the integrity that was very bad. <laughs> the integration that was coming. <laughs> so, girl, I remember this Saturday. Me and the regular girl working. But then this other one says that she wants to go to the river. And for some reason, now, it was almost my time to, yeah, I was thinking I was looking here to do something like that. And then she would, this, this other girl would call and I would meet her on, on another street with her family. But I needed to get away from my regular. Oh my gosh, let us So here the ugly thing that I did, right? I went and I picked a little disagreement with this poor girl, right? I pretended to be angry, and I walked away. And you should see me running like a jackrabbit. <laughs> Out of the compound, up the road, dart across like the cathedral to meet this other girl and her family and go to the river. Oh my God, that was not nice. That was a lack of integrity. Definitely. I'm yeah. glad that was before my time. What is going on? 
I'm glad that you learned that integrity before you met me. Because so, that was anyway, nice at all. Yes. Anyway, later on, I had to go to England. And this girl said to me, my regular girlfriend, you know, when you come back, you would no longer be in love with me. And I said, no, man, you're joking, you're joking, man. I would be in love with you forever, okay? So I went to England, and I overstayed my time. It was, it was, a, it was, a, um, it was one of those charter flights for five weeks. I stayed three months. And when I came back, in true boyish, foolish, lack of integrity, I just stayed away from my regular girl and didn't want any part with her. And I decided that this is the end of that because like, you know, your boy went to a big England and he's seen things and now he's, he's out there. He's still man, you see? Well, at least to me that was some integrity to stay away because you knew what you were doing in England. Well, I wasn't doing anything drastic in England. Eh? But you got a new friend. Yes. And that is why perhaps this girl who had more intelligence than me and who knew better and the ways of the world and I was just being silly and boastful that I'm, I'll be in, I'll, I mean, it would be okay. <laughs> and girl, I just avoided my regular girlfriend for no good reason until I called her and I said, it's off, it's off, it's off. And I could hear her crying in the background, crying on the phone there and I said, oh my gosh. Anyway, my heart was of steel, man of steel. I'm not going to, to bend in. You know, years later, because there's a, a, a sense of integrity warring, the girl is married, she has children. I, I decided, you know, this was a very unfair thing to do to someone without, I mean, you were so close to that person. I got on the phone, and you knew about this part. And I said, listen, I must call this girl, and I must apologize for the folly that I I, I heaped on her, yes, right? Of course. And I called her and I said to her, you know, I am sorry about the way we I broke off our relationship, right? Background music. I am very sorry about the way I handled things. And you know what she said to me? I often over the years wondered what did I do wrong? Mm. Louise, I tell you, I was so glad that I made that phone call. I made that phone call and integrity is something that requires honesty. Yes, that's so, right. so let me let me just let me just press on a little bit. When I left the express, followed certain jobs and got back now to to work in with the oil company, right? Hear how your integrity, and I, I'm saying this for the benefit of people who work and their integrity is challenged. So you bought me this lovely truck. I say you bought me it because you were instrumental. <laughs> okay? You bought me this lovely truck and you said, okay, you're no longer with the, in, in the world of journalism, but we have to live, we have to mind our kids, whatnot and you were able to get me into NP. But I had a little two-week wait, and a little two-week wait before I got into NP. Yeah. So what am I gonna do in these two weeks, okay? Hi. <coughs> excuse me. Hi. Oh, excuse me. Are you safe for second? <laughs> Are you safe for second? Let's say no. <laughs> okay, Maybe should bring a little stuff. So anyway, in this two-week period, I asked my son Lyndon, hey Lyndon, you in the um, you you in the travel agency business, you think you think you could get a opening for me somewhere in Biaco and you know these people who bring in stuff and you could you could you know get a fridge or some That's why. Right. No call names. We don't want any names. No, what I mean is that was when you was waiting on the truck? Yes. When I no, got the truck. No 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 no, 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 no. When I got the truck, when I got the truck, I didn't I didn't go into NP immediately. I didn't go into NP Yeah, but Lyndon was a little boy when you, you changed your job, Nancy. Well, you, that must have been years after. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Time, okay. Remember, okay. Lyndon would have been just a little boy. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I'll jump that part. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Thanks, 
just uh, pulling me over that. Yeah. I'm done, I'm done. Anyway, when years I Years later, you're talking about years later. Years later, okay. But you have had some experiences but prior to that. Right. So I have now this nice little yellow three-ton truck. And I go to work in MP. And the, the fellas down there are really nice, great company. And this guy comes to me one day and he says, um, I've got a pass here. No, I want you to help me move some material from discarded wood and ply. Right? Now this, the purpose of this is not to throw mud anywhere, but to show how people's integrity can be compromised. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, I will be back here at lunchtime to do this little move, removal for you. That's not a problem. And um, how much are you going to charge me? I won't charge you anything. I mean, that's okay. It's not, I'm not carrying it on my back anyway. And we go to load up the truck with these little scraps. And he comes out with a certain item and he puts it on the truck. And I said, wait, does your pass require that? And he says, no, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And I said, no, my friend, it's not okay. Now remember your own training there. I am touching something here. It's on my truck mm -hmm. that does not belong. Of course, because the past says old scrap mm -hmm. material. Old scrap material. So he removes the item. The security guard probably was in it. And I said to myself, um, well, let's see what happens at the gate here. And the guy says, okay, you can go ahead. And I said, no, I want you to check the truck. I want you to check the truck thoroughly. And he checks the truck. He must have been disappointed that I am being straight. We drive out, and the man is trying to explain to me, hey, this is the first time I've ever done this. And I said, no, I don't want to know your record, son. I don't need your record. Okay? So now... Years have rolled by, different trucks have come into our possession, and then, you know, no, I think I need to go back a little bit. I kind of jumped the gun. When I was at the Express, there was, beyond 1975, an advertisement put out in the paper, Train Talk was hiring um, staff for the Human Resource Department, the PR Department, Public Relations. You could send in, what is it called? Resume and whatnot. Yeah. And I decided to do a nice layout for them because that was my specialty. I did a lovely kind of a magazine type layout. And I sent and I took it with me to this interview. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're, you're on top of that one? Yeah, I could stand. It's okay. Oh, no, Louise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sure? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll move this here. I, I, I'm sorry that you're in this company. Yeah. So, anyway, I went to this interview and with my, you know, my folder. A lovely layout. I have a 24 page type thing laid out. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be interviewed for this PR position. position. The interview is going great, 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 great. That's a very notable personnel there. And then, just as I'm about to leave, I'm asked the question Tell me something. If something is wrong with the company, should the PR department let it be known to the public that we have this problem? Louise, I knew the job was going up in smoke. Because honesty, I said, yes. You have to know the tell white lies in no, the department. <laughs> no, I decided I wasn't going to tell any white lies. This is not me. <laughs> I can't be writing for a newspaper trying to help people see how to behave better how to become better citizens, and now I'm going to condone a lie. Maybe, maybe not every PR department has to go through that. But I certainly said, 
No, sir. I'm not going to lie to the public. The public should be told the truth. But I knew I lost the job. <laughs> I lost it. I mean, and I think from what I heard afterwards, it came down to three persons who were in line for the job. Somebody has got it. And that was the end of my brief interlude with the PR department. Okay? Maybe there are PR departments that are really above board and they do a superb job that nobody has to lie. Nobody has to be. I don't. Hmm? I don't. Well, I don't know. I really don't know. But anyway. So now we get back to the we get back to the, the days of of trucking. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, I was trying to, to, to pull back my, my own tenure with trucking. Right? Um, there was a time when we would go a lot to Amoku, out in Galiota Point. And I remember a certain individual coming from the, the receiving department. And he he is saying to me, you brought a lot of um, a certain item, but here's what I want you to do for me. I want you the next time you get to Mayaro, give me a call, <laughs> give me a number, and I will tell you where to drop certain items. So he's working in the receiving department, and he's going to organize his papers to say, if I brought 24 of a certain item, it's going to be covered in whatever way he's going to do it. And therefore, partners, we're going to share the, the profits. I said to him, tell me which one of these items you like, and I will buy it for you. <laughs> tell me which one of these items you like, and I will buy it for you. And there have been reports of things that are stolen out of Amoko's compound carried out on trucks, told this by some people who had access to the knowledge, right? But in every, in every, in every, in every works fair, you could call it, there's crooked, this going on. Okay, so I go down to Point Lisas and I'm making a delivery. And the guy comes out and he says, okay, you've got so much and so much on the truck. Um, here what to do. Um, I have some drums I want to send back. But I don't want you to take them back to the company. I want you to take them to a, a, certain, a certain place in a nearby location. And I say, my friend, it can't work. My mother told me not to touch things. <laughs> it can't work that way. I'm proud of you, man. Because imagine your wife working in the department and you in bubble. Oh, gosh, that would be That terrible. would have been terrible. Now, the, the point of all of this is, if this, if your integrity as a, an employee is compromised, stop it. It's time to drive the sword into dishonesty. Right? But corruption is a big thing. Eh? Corruption is a big thing. Extra money. You so that's care. that's you another care. that's another thing too. Extra money. So I go to do a private job, and the supervisor is telling me, "How much are you going to charge for this job?" Well, I'm going to charge you. Let's say I'm going to charge you three hundred dollars. Okay, good, good, good. Here what to do. I'm making all this voucher for $350. The thing is already on my truck, eh? I'm making this voucher for $350. When you come back, meet me outside, give me the $50. And I go on that job and I am sick to my stomach because I'm roped in because the item is already on the truck. And I deliver the item and I come back there and I get the $350. He meets me outside and I say, listen, you never call me for work again. I want no part of you and no part of your jobs, mm. right? So integrity continues to be challenged. You see, I want to say that integrity in the workplace, right? How do 
you show integrity in your workplace? Avoiding conflict. You have to be dependable, you have to be reliable, you have to be honest, and you have to respect the people you work with. Now, if you see something dishonest happening in a department, the big question is how do you handle that? How do you handle dishonesty that you might be privy to? How do you handle it? Because you're afraid of victimization, one, right? Well, that's where we come back now to the same little portion we had the other day. If these things are affecting you in your job and you see it happening, don't be afraid to quit your job. Don't be afraid to stand up for what is right. Don't be afraid. Dependability. Even at the cost of your job. Even at the cost of your job. You just, you just get cracking. Uh, dealing with someone who lacks integrity. I found this to be an interesting thing. I, I kind of Googled that. How do you deal with someone who lacks integrity? One, this person who lacks integrity, how, what, what are the signals this, a, a, a person without integrity, an unscrupulous person? What's, what's some of the, uh, the, the signals they give out? They say showing ambiguous speech. You can't read them. You just can't read this person. The person is always on the defensiveness. Language and behavior is inconsistent. This person is not stable. And if this person is not stable, it's very likely that this person could lose integrity. Hmm. Right? Frequent compromising by this person. That's another big thing. A person who brags, a person who is rude in arguments, no. That's a lack of respect, a lack of... You know the golden rule? Do unto others as you have them do unto you. If we live by that golden rule, you know, our country would be a far better place. Well, it starts at home. Yeah. They say when you train a child, it, 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 you, you make a better child and the child is exposed and the community is improved mm -hmm. and then they go to work, a company mm -hmm. and, and, and it's a, a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. It's a ripple effect, you know, mm -hmm. because sometimes someone may not know about integrity at home and they go in the workplace and view being a good example, they try to, you know, mm -hmm. emulate you. Mm -hmm. So being the example helps, but rarely charity begins at home. Definitely. Most things, and that's why parents have a great responsibility. What they do in the presence of their little children, because children, sometimes you don't even know that they are listening. They seem very wrapped up doing what they're doing until when you hear you say something and the child respond to it you say so they're listening yeah boy and there children now theme. children now are very brilliant mm -hmm. so as parents and grandparents you know we have to be good examples and the best example is by living the thing living the thing yeah not but, so much about talking about it but to actually manifest it in your own life experience is the best teacher. Let me ask you something. I come like last time. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> you ever had any kind of integrity challenge? Well. <clears throat> or you know of anybody who might have confided in you that there's an integrity uh, challenge that they're facing? No. Um, I can't say that um, I recall one incident, you know, with someone that I had respect for and admired. Mm -hmm. And one day he said to me that a particular person did not like him. Mm -hmm. And if I think he's right about it. And I said, well, no, I, I, I can't say, I don't know. He said, well, the, that particular person 
knows that you and I are good friends. So they wouldn't probably just, they wouldn't probably just start to speak about me to you because they know you are loyal to me. Mm. So maybe you should start a conversation that is negative against me. And then they would, may then be able to open up to, to see how they feel about me. And I was like, what? Nah, I can't do that. Because you set me up. Of course, ladies. That I go into especially say something negative against you. Mm -hmm. So that makes the person feel free. That's slander, man. To trust me oh, and yeah. open up and tell me how they feel about you. I said, mm -mm. That's rough. I can't yeah. do that. I'm that sorry. Girl. Any other favor but not that. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, that was. And I thought that was <laughs> against my grain. Of course, Louisa. I'm, I'm, very, happy to like I'm very happy to hear you when say. It's against my grain to actually, you know, plot. That's a plot against yes, someone. Yes, 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 that is terrible. terrible. And to what avail? You call the person and ask them if they like you or they don't like you? Precisely. Be very frank. Yeah, say I have my suspicion you don't like me. And am I right? And the person say, yes, they don't like you. I ask them why. But of course, I didn't tell the person all of that. Mm -hmm. But I just thought that this is a weak. A weak way of dealing with the situation. Precisely. The, 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 and I was quite a young person mm -hmm. at the time, but mm -hmm. you know, you you know, we grew up learning things we don't do. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that we were taught as kids growing up. There are certain things you don't do. There are certain things you don't say. If you say something, you must be able to repeat it in the presence of the person. Else, don't say it because things go back to people. Yes. yes. You know? So so there are some basic things, fundamental behavior that one need to mm -hmm. live by. Yes, yes, yes. You know, a code of loyalty. Code of ethics. Man. Code of ethics. Yes, yes, yes. So we must impress you know? from home this yeah. code of ethics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, they don't do certain things, you know. You can't sell your integrity. Mm -hmm. You can't forsake it. So if you learn it. Keep so it. I guess a code of ethics comes from the word ethical. <laughs> <laughs> Ro what word we were talking about, no? Integrity. Integrity. Yes, yes, yes. You know, let me just put in a little as here, right? Ethics for integrity. Yes. Of integrity. I remember when I went to work in NP, I remember a certain individual, a supervisor, and I respected him greatly, saying that when you're making your deliveries, just like my mother would say, don't touch what is not yours. And do you know there was an occasion that struck me over the years, a particular driver had gone to make a delivery. And while the person was looking after the invoice, the driver just looked. I'm not going to say whether it was a contractor or an NP worker, right? But he just saw this lovely pen and thought, well, there were many pens on the table, so one wouldn't be missed. And before he got back to base, the call came that yes. the error thing. And you know, he was fired immediately. 